On this episode of Simply, we head to South Kingston to visit the rustic luxury of Rhode Island's newest hidden gem. It's time to sail away on the Block Island Ferry for some summer fun. We'll meet a Rhode Island restaurateur who brings casual cuisine to a picturesque landscape. All before we catch up with Chef Nick as he prepares another culinary adventure. Simply is brought to you by Cranston's Wines and More and Dr. Eric George and Associates. Hey everybody, I'm Becky Gibble and this is Simply. On today's episode, we are in beautiful Cumberland, Rhode Island at Food Truck Concert Night, where there are food trucks as far as the eye can see, plenty of grass to place your picnic blanket, and live music. So hang out while we eat our way through today's episode. I hope my appetite's up for the challenge. First off, I had to cool down, so I headed to Kona Ice for a frozen treat. I chose the lavender lemonade flavor to get us in the right mindset for our first stop, Lavender Waves Farm in South Kingstown, Rhode Island. Oh, it's so relaxing. My name is Henry Cabrera and I'm the owner of Lavender Waves Farm in South Kingston, Rhode Island. My background is actually not in agriculture. Uh, I'm a physician actually. Uh, and this is a hobby that uh, turned into a business. <laughs> I wanted something that I can enjoy in my backyard and I wanted animals and so I figured, well, let me open up a farm and maybe I can make a little business out of it. And one thing led to another, and before I knew it, I was designing this whole lavender farm and acquiring animals. And I built the farm suite uh, where tourists come and stay. And the latest addition is a lavender shop where people can come and, and purchase things. So uh, it's just been growing. I've, I've been doing this now for three years here, and every year it gets a little bigger and a little better. The farm has over 4,000 lavender plants, and there's over 10 variety here and lavender is a perennial, so it comes back every year. It's, it's a very easy plant to maintain, actually. Uh, an interesting fact about the farm is that uh, you won't see any irrigation system around the plants because I don't have to water them. So some of the purported therapeutic benefits of lavender are uh, anti-anxiety, for insomnia, for hypertension. Uh, also, lavender is edible, so it's got many, many culinary purposes. And there are some claims that uh, it has antiseptic properties too. Lavender blooms from the end of June until the beginning of August. And after that, there is a secondary bloom. So there actually are flowers on the farm probably until about October. I like unique animals. And uh, the ones that I have are fairly unique. I have chickens, guinea hens, ducks, geese, and I have some white peacocks. I have five alpacas, one llama who's a guard of the entire herd, and then I have a donkey who's also another guard, and my rare Bactrian camel, his name is Humphrey, he's 15 months old. This is a two-hump camel, so it's a little bit more unique of an animal and, and you'll be hard pressed to, to see many of these around the United States. We probably have close to 750,000 or a million honeybees. The interesting thing is that a lot of the honeybees, actually their tongues are not long enough to reach some of the lavender uh, flowers. So we actually tend to get some more bumblebees than we do honeybees around here. People ask me all the time, how did you come up with this design? And I, my answer is always the same, just artistic creativity. There was, there was nothing really, there's no science behind this. It doesn't help the plants grow anymore. There's no science to it. It's purely artistic creativity. I'm certainly not an expert on energy and things like that, but I get a lot of people that come here during the, for the Cut Your Own Lavender events and, and they talk about the energy that flows through the farm. I guess it's a combination of the plant itself 
and the unique design that I've created. Somehow, a lot of people claim that it, it creates a very, very positive energy. Um, I typically say thank you. I don't know much else about that. <laughs> Most people actually don't know that this exists. Uh, I've only been here for three years, so uh, it's not surprising that people don't know that I'm here. However, um, people are usually very impressed from the time they, they turn the corner around the little walkway entrance and they come in and, and they're, they're hit with this gorgeous field filled with lavender and a beautiful gazebo in the middle. It really is quite stunning to be so close to both the ocean and the highway and you don't, you don't even realize that this is here right under your nose. It's a farm, but yet there's a certain sense of luxury that, that surrounds the plant itself. It's a very unique experience. Oh, brain freeze. Ha. <sighs> Wasn't that Lavender Waves Farm relaxing? Speaking of waves, I sailed away on the Block Island Ferry. I took a trip and left my troubles behind. Nothing says summer in Rhode Island like a trip to Block Island. Your vacation starts when you step aboard the Block Island Ferry. In less than an hour, you'll be in paradise where the possibilities are endless. From the moment you step off the ferry, you are greeted by the charming shops and restaurants on Water Street. Find that special treasure at an artisan and vintage market. Something fun and unique at Glass Onion or shop the island's fashion at one of the many boutiques. On a hot summer day, there is nothing like jumping on a moped and making your way to the crystal blue waters of Crescent Beach for a day of sunbathing, boogie boarding, and family fun. As you make your way around the island, you can take the short trip down to Mohegan Bluffs, one of the most beautiful stretches of shoreline on the East Coast. 141 steps bring you down to a secluded rocky beach with spectacular views of the dramatic clay cliffs. And you can't miss a stop at the historic Southeast Lighthouse, a clifftop lighthouse from 1874. Next, head up the road and follow the signs to find the sacred labyrinth tucked away on the north side of the island. Enjoy the peace and quiet of a walking meditation and the spectacular views of Satcham Pond and the North Lighthouse in the distance. It's all on Block Island and it's all so close. Start planning your next day trip or maybe make it a weekend getaway at one of the island's many charming inns. No matter what your perfect day at Block Island looks like, it is certain to be full of delicious food, lush landscapes, rich history, and a sweet treat or two. At the end of a long day, cap your adventure with a return trip to Point Judith, bathed in sun and awash with memories of time well spent. I'm gonna hit this line next. This could be a minute. Stick around, we'll be right back. Mm. Speaking of delicious food, next up, we head to Wickford on the Water and its new location, JB's on the Water, to have some delicious cuisine, fantastic ambiance, and some of the best views in the ocean state. Mm. Hi, my name is John Brito, and I'm the owner of uh, both JB's and Wickford on the Water. I've been in the industry since I was 16. Restaurant industry is all I've done. Sticking with what I know, so to speak, in life, and uh, I feel like I'm, I do a pretty good job at it. I love serving a great dish and watching, doing my walk through the restaurant, watching people rave about it. They don't even know who I am, I'm just walking by and listening, and uh, that's what gives me the pleasure to do it. So uh, food is uh, an American cuisine, so you get some burgers, tacos, 
for the seafood lovers, we carry some great signature fish dishes accompanied with uh, some nice cocktails. So one of our most popular drinks here, it's called the JB's, which is basically, it's a margarita. I put my initials on it for a reason. It's basically a coconut margarita. You have to come here to try it. On a nice sunny summer month, there's no better drink than that. We're in the beautiful Jamestown, surrounded in beautiful water and uh, Newport Bridge. Just a very uh, tropical feel little island in Rhode Island. JB's obviously clearly has the best views. We're literally, we can touch the ocean from the deck. You have to be here to believe it. Whitford is uh, basically where we started. But that's our original first restaurant. Surrounded by water, beautiful view, outdoor seating, indoor seating. Want to sit outside overlooking the water, that's the spot. The views and the servers is just really the two top reasons you should visit us. Both locations have beautiful water views. Both locations has outdoor seatings. Both locations has patios that are dog friendly. I like to call them cousins, they're not twins. So Rhode Island, as we know, is filled with a lot of beautiful outdoor restaurants near the water. And if you're trying to go somewhere where you're going to enjoy yourself and enjoy the weather, give us a shot. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. To me, the most rewarding part about being a realtor is the integral part you have in your clients' lives. Buying and selling a home is one of the biggest things that you do in your lifetime. It's truly an honor for me to help my clients uh, buy and sell their home. One of the things that I especially enjoy about the real estate profession is the ability to curate your own version of success. It affords people from all different walks of lives different education levels, the opportunities to find your own version of success. I like the opportunity of being able to make my own schedules. Coming from a corporate environment into this, it affords me a lot more time that I can visit with family while still making time for my clients. I started in real estate like most things in life. It was timing. My first child was a toddler. I needed to find some work that interests me with flexible hours and real estate seemed to afford me the opportunity to curate my own business and knew immediately that I had found my forever career. The first thing I would advise somebody who is interested in real estate is to take their classes at the Rhode Island Association of Realtors. In the real estate industry, we start out with a pre-license course and that's to get your real estate license. We have been teaching these courses for many years and our instructors are of a level like no other. The Rhode Island Association of Realtors has supported me first and foremost through the level of education that we have. Our industry is ever evolving, it's always changing. We're helping our clients buy the biggest investment in their life and we need to know what we're doing. Most people when they get their real estate license go to work in their broker's office and the number one question is, now what do I do? We take all that headache, all that work away from you. We've developed pathways that will take you from one level of success to the highest. The Rhode Island Association of Realtors offers everything from pre-licensing, brokers classes, certifications, Right Start program, even college level courses and beyond. Everything that one would need to really prepare them for a very successful real estate career. There are different careers in real estate. You can work as a residential realtor where you're helping your clients purchase residential homes. You also have a commercial division, whether that's a larger multifamily, a commercial property, a storefront. You can also do property management and you can also become an appraiser. Helping people achieve their housing and investing goals is rewarding and profoundly important. I, I feel like I've been part of changing people's lives in a very positive way. For more information about a career in real estate, go to rirealtors.org.
Well, we're right back. I'll do this mess with them. Keep on Cooking is brought to you by Cranston's Wines and More. Welcome back, folks. These frisky fries are so good that I ate most of them during that short break. But don't worry, I'll get hungry again, which is why it's fantastic that Nick Raybar is cooking up something so special, you have to see it to believe it. No spoilers. Mm. Hey gang, welcome to Keep On Cooking, and here we are at the Avenue and Bar of all places to talk about something that we love to talk about here on Keep On Cooking, and that is grilling. Man, we have grilled everything on this show, from short ribs to pizza, wings, steaks, fish tacos, you name it, we've grilled it. But one thing that we don't often put enough emphasis on is the side dishes. And I can't think of anything better than to start off with the mother of all side dishes, and that is my summer pasta salad. Well, it is my absolute favorite time of year to be cooking because all of my favorite ingredients are in season. We have corn, tomatoes, cucumbers, radish, fresh herbs, and so much more. And I think it would be absolutely criminal to douse those with mayonnaise. So today we're gonna start by making a light, fresh vinaigrette. So let's get whisking. Well, there are a lot of different ways to make a vinaigrette. Mine is very simple, only a few ingredients. And today I'm gonna use Dijon mustard. And I almost always start with something to emulsify the vinaigrette so that it doesn't separate. Once you go in with the Dijon mustard, it's important to go in with whatever acid you're using. I'm using a light apple cider vinegar today. Now we're gonna go in with an oil. I'm using olive oil. I almost always make my vinaigrettes out of olive oil. You might notice I didn't go in with that much olive oil. The reason is, is because I add a little bit of sweetness to it. So I'm gonna put in some honey, and that is gonna cut the sharpness of the vinegar. You don't wanna to add too much honey. You wanna use about a half a cup of olive oil to a half a cup of cider vinegar to a quarter cup of honey. That's the nice balance, but of course you gotta season this dressing as well. So I'm gonna start going in with some kosher salt and a little fresh cracked pepper. And that, after a quick whisk, is our vinaigrette. And now we're gonna to start to go in with the main ingredients. So I'm gonna start with bow tie pasta here today. I've cooked it all the way. So when you're making pasta salad, oftentimes you'll see just little chopped up bits of vegetables and stuff in there. I like equal stuff to pasta, which means I like a lot of stuff in there. And one of my favorite, well, I guess stuffs, is corn. Fresh corn, guys, friends, it's a judgment-free zone, but you gotta use fresh corn. And you have to use cucumbers. I love cucumbers. They hold up again well to the acidity of the dressing, and they add a nice, crisp, fresh note to this. Now, to really hit this thing, we're gonna go in with some tomatoes. These are farm fresh, ready to go, and they're gonna add an incredible summer flavor to this pasta salad. And how about some radish? Love it or hate it, I don't care what you say, I love radish. It adds a fabulous, bit of spice, and I'm gonna go in with a decent amount. And not to cause any controversy, but we're gonna go in with some raw red onion. I know sometimes it gets a bad rap, but it absolutely adds that fabulous flavor that I think is essential for this summer pasta salad. So you'll shed no tears for this next ingredient. We are going in with herbs, and we are gonna go in with a lot of them. Starting the party with some chopped parsley. And we are gonna make it rain, kids. Now, parsley is a relatively neutral herb, but this one is anything but. This is fresh chopped dill. We're just gonna keep on going. We're just gonna keep on going. This is keep on cooking, and we're gonna keep on going. And you might be asking yourself, is that too much dill? And the answer is, oh no. I would keep on going if I could. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna switch this up just a little bit because we have so much fresh in there that we gotta sneak in a little bit of fat. Now you can stop here if you want, but I'm gonna put in some blue cheese crumbles. Blue cheese is a little bit of a salty ingredient, but you absolutely have to add salt to this salad. And a little bit of pepper. Pepper's gonna add a little bit of texture. It's also gonna add a little bit of spice along the same lines as the onions and the radish and all those complex ingredients. Our ingredients are in the bowl. The dressing is whisked and it's held together beautifully. Time to put these two together. Maestro, start the music. And 
notice that I'm not just dumping the whole bowl in there. I am slowly and calmly adding the vinaigrette just the right amount. All right, enough of that. Let's finish this off. So guys, remember the pasta? The cucumber, the tomato, the corn that's buried underneath that pile of blue cheese and dill? Well, it's time for them to reemerge, and you're gonna see that we have just the right amount of stuff in this perfect pasta salad. And you can see how now it's like 50-50. All those fresh summer ingredients to bow tie pasta, that's what you want when you're making a pasta salad. A ton of fresh ingredients in there. So you can put this out with all of your favorites. Whatever your heart desires on the grill, you definitely need side dishes. So why not this one? Because that, my friends, is sizzling summer pasta salad. Well, fun time here at the Avenue M Bar, shaking up some sides. Until we meet again, gang, keep on cooking. Well, that wraps things up for us. Good thing, too. I couldn't possibly eat another bite. Well. Simply is brought to you by Cranston's Wines and More and Dr. Eric George and Associates.